Hi everyone, here are your notes, your official notes for section 5.1. You kind of already went through some of these properties on your worksheet that you did for homework from Tuesday night. Um, but here we go, we're gonna solidify it and make sure you guys get it written down for notes because remember all your assessments are open notes. So you wanna make sure you get them in there. Okay, so chapter five gets us into the world of polynomials and all the different things we can do with them. Before we can get into the operations of polynomials, we have to go through all of the different types of properties that can occur with exponents, which then also ties in scientific notation. All right, so the most basic type of um, properties that we went through were your product rule. And remember, your product rule says that as long as you have the same base, so in this case, we have a to the nth power times a to the nth power, as long as I have that base of a or the same base, I can add my exponents together when I'm multiplying those powers together. So a to the nth times a to the nth is equal to a to the m plus n. Again, pause this video at any point in time that you feel like you need to get caught up, but I'm gonna keep plugging away. Our zero exponent tells us that any base to a zero power is going to be equal to one. So you could have a whole wide variety of different things, but if you have it to the zero power, it will be equal to one. Negative exponents, whenever you have a negative exponent, you can move it either from a numerator to the denominator or denominator to the numerator, and that will make it become um, positive. So if I have a to the negative mth power to turn that into a positive exponent, we would put that as one over a to the mth, or if I had one over a to the negative mth power, I could move that up to the numerator and it would become a to the positive m. More negatives, what if I had more than one um, base occurring with negative exponents? So if I have a to the negative m, moving that down to the denominator would make that become a positive m in my exponent. And then if I have b to the negative n in my denominator, moving it up to the numerator would make it become a positive exponent of n. And then another power that, our property that we have with negative exponents, if I have a whole entire fraction being taken to a negative n exponent, so a over b all to the negative nth power, I can make that exponent positive by just taking the reciprocal of that fraction inside. So a over b would become b over a, which would then turn my negative exponent into a positive. Our quotient rule, as long as I have the same bases and we are dividing, so a to the mth all over a to the nth, then we would subtract m minus n. Our power rule says if we have a power to a power, so a to the mth to the nth is equal to a to the m times n, so you multiply those together. And now let's see if we've got this all together. All right, so well, the first few problems that we're gonna be doing are kind of similar to what we did in our review at the beginning of class. These are meant to be very easy just to make sure that we've got our properties down and then we'll start getting a little bit harder as we move on. Uh, again, pause this at any point in time. I know I already have these examples written down for me. Um, so pause, catch up whenever you need to. So for our first one, we have three to the fourth times three to the seventh. Since three to the fourth and three to the seventh have the same base, that's gonna be equal to, I'm gonna write it all out, three to the four plus seven, which would be three to the seven plus four is 11th. Now that's gonna be a super large number. If I get my phone out here and do the calculator and I turn it sideways, I can do three and then you should be looking for like an X to the Y power button. Um, I can use my phone there. I don't have my actual calculator on me right now. It's at school, which is 1,777, one, or 177,147 is what that number is equivalent to. Okay, next one. Five to the third times five, that really is an exponent of one. So that's five to the three plus one, which would be five to the fourth. And again, five to the fourth, using my calculator, gets me 625. I should have known that one, because five squared is 25, and 25 squared is 625. C, now we have no numbers, we just have variables. Y, 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 so I all have, they have the same base. 
which means I can add my exponents. So 3 plus 8 plus 2 gets me y to the 13th. All right, so now we've got a little bit more action happening here. Um, a lot of times what I'll tell my students is to kind of group things together. So the commutative property of multiplication tells us that I can move things around. So I'm going to move my 5 times my 3 together. And I'm really going to ignore those parentheses because there's no exponents on the outside of them, so they don't really matter. And then I'm going to, sorry, I'm missing a negative 3, negative 3, times y squared times y to the 4th. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. y squared times y to the 4th is y to the 6th. Okay, so those bases of 5 and negative 3, we would just multiply those together. Don't do anything with their exponents. All right, moving on. Oh, there we go. So now let's add in some negative exponent work. So in A, I have 1 over 2 to the negative third. To make that become a positive, that would be 2 to the positive third. 2 to the third is 8. For B, I'm going to flip-flop everything, so send the 3 up, which becomes a positive 3 squared. Send the 2 down, so 2 to the positive 3rd exponent. 3 squared is 9. 2 to the 3rd is 8. Okay, try this one on your own. Oops. Try this one on your own. Did you get 243 all over 16? Hopefully you did. All right, so now let's do some quotient rule work. So here we have 3 to the 7th all over 3 to the 2nd. Since I have the same base, we're just going to do 7 minus 2, which is 5. And I feel like we just did 3 to the 5th before. Did we do 3 to the 5th before? 3 to the 5th, 243. Yeah, we did. 243. For B, I have K to the 7th over 12, so 7 minus 12. 7 minus 12 is going to be negative 5. Since that's a negative, I want to turn that into a positive. So 1 over k to the fifth. Um, sometimes instead of showing all those work, that work, I'll just think, okay, I have 7 in the top, 12 in the bottom. If I cancel them out, I'd be left with 5 in the bottom, which would just get me straight to the 1 over k to the fifth. And then for c, Let's go ahead and switch everything. So z to the 8th over z to the 5th so that I get positives. If I have 8 z's in the top, 5 in the numerator, and start canceling them out, I would be left with 3 in the numerator. So z to the 3rd. All right. Power prep rules. So here we have p to the 8th to the 3rd. So that means we're going to do p to the 8 times 3, p to the 24th. Here we have a fraction inside of our parenthesis to a power, so that means I'm going to take 2 to the 4th and 3 to the 4th. 2 to the 4th, well 2 to the 2nd is 4, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, so 81, so 16 over 81. And then for the last one, since I have two different terms, I have to multiply that exponent to both the 3 exponent, the exponent on the 3, and the exponent on the y. The exponent on the 3 is a 1, and the exponent on the y is also a 1. So that's going to become 3 to the 4th, and then y to the 4th, and we just said 3 to the 4th was 81, y to the 4th. Okay, so if you can take all your numbers that have an exponent attached to them, take them to an actual number. Uh, you have a calculator that should do it, unless like the number is something super long and you have scientific notation popping up on your calculator, then just leave it with the exponent, um, but you should be able to simplify those through. Okay, let's step up our game a little bit. Here we have 6p to the 7th times 2, so that's going to become 6 squared p to the 14th, 7 times 2, 6 squared is 36, so it's 36p to the 14th. For B, I'm going to take that negative 2, I'm going to attach the negative with the 2, take that to the third power. Power of a power here, multiply, so that would be m to the 15th, 5 times 3, all over. Now take it down to the denominator, z to the third, because that original exponent is a 1, 1 times 3 is 3. And then the only other thing we can do is simplify that negative 2 to the third, so negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would be negative 8 
m to the 15th all over z to the third. C, I have a p negative um, on my exponent, so we can do the reciprocal, 7 over 3, which makes that a positive 2. 7 squared is 49, 3 squared is 9. All right, I hope you're loving this as much as I am. I mean, I could do exponents all day. Would I want to do exponents all day? Probably not. Okay, see if you can try this one on your own. Did you get 9x to the 4th all over y squared? Hopefully you did. All right, we're almost cruising to the harder ones. That's where things start getting a little bit spicy. So here we have same bases. So let's go ahead and add. So we get 3 to the 2 plus a negative 5, which is 3 to the negative 3rd. I can't have negative exponents, so move it down. 3 to, 1 over 3 to the 3rd. 3 to the 3rd is 27, so 1 over 27. For B, we can go ahead and go to straight adding. So negative 3 plus negative 4 plus 2. I like my fingers. Negative 3 plus 4 is negative 7. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. Moving that down gets us 1 over x to the 5th. It would probably be the easiest way to simplify that. You could technically move all your negatives down right away and do x squared over x to the 3rd, x to the 4th, which would get you x squared over x to the 7th, which would then also get you your 1 over x to the 5th. Um, so there's multiple pathways to get to that final answer, but it's probably just easier just to start adding straight across before you start doing your movements. Because if you're lucky, they'll all go to positives. Okay, so now here we have multiple variables. We've got some positive exponents. We've got some negative exponents. So let's go ahead and do some movement. I'm going to move this guy down, that guy up. So that gets me a y squared and a y to the fifth in my numerator and an x squared, x to the fourth. Simplifying that gets me y to the seventh over x to the sixth. It's not like my fingers very much. I need to put some lotion on my hands. I don't know. All right, so see if you can do this one on your own. A bit more challenging. Did you get y to the second all over x to the eighth, z to the seventh? Hopefully you did. All right. Ooh, all right. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Good stuff. We're almost, we're almost done with exponents, then we'll go to scientific notation, which gets more exponents in there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify this left set of parentheses fractions by taking everything inside and squaring it. So I have a 3 inside, so I have to square that. I have an x squared inside, so I got to square that. And I got a y, so I'll have to square that. So that simplifies to 9x to the fourth over y squared. Okay, so now on the other one, I'm going to flip this. So I have a y to the negative 2. That stays a negative 2 just because I'm flipping it. It doesn't change everything. So now that all goes to a positive 1. Okay, now we could move that y down, right? which would leave me, I don't know why I put an equal sign there, which would leave me nothing up top, a 4 in the bottom, an x in the third on the bottom, and a y squared. Did everybody follow that? All right, so now I'm going to bring that down. So 1 over 4x to the third y squared. So now let's start canceling things out. Let's fo focus on the numbers first, the coefficients here of 9 and 4. Can I reduce 9 over 4 by anything? Can I take out a 2 out of a 9 and a 4? Can I take out a 3 out of 9 and a 4? No, I can't simplify 9 fourths. So that's going to stay 9 fourths. So I'm going to end up with a 9 in my numerator and a 4 in my denominator. Now look at your x terms. I have an x to the 4th and an x to the 3rd. If I were to cancel all of those out, I would be left with 1x up top because I have 4 on the top, 3 on the bottom, slash, 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 1 left over. And then in my denominator, we have a y squared and a y squared, which would combine to be y to the fourth. So we have 9x all over 4y to the fourth. Um, so these type of problems seem a bit complicated, but if you take it one step at a time and then just keep uh, chipping away at it, you can simplify it and get it to that final simplified answer. 
Okay, so see if you can try this one on your own. Did you get 64A to the second all over B to the ninth? Hopefully you did, and hopefully that was the right answer. All right, so now let's get into scientific notation. So if you guys remember, scientific notation is where you have a single integer being multiplied by a power of 10, right? So you can't have a double digit, a triple digit times the power of 10. It needs to be a single digit. Um, so just A times some type of power of N. So we're going to do first, can we write a number in scientific notation? And then second, can we do the reverse of it? And then we're going to get to the good stuff, and that's doing operations using scientific notation. Okay, so here we have 820,000 that we have to convert to scientific notation. So if I move my decimal place to a single digit in front, it would be 8.2 times 10 to the, so how many decimal places do we have to go? One, two, three, four, five. So that would be 10 to the fifth. Now think about this. 8.2 is much, much smaller than 800, or 820,000, right? So that would make sense that I would be multiplying by 10 to a positive 5 as opposed to a negative 5 because I need it to get bigger. 8.2 needs to be bigger to get to the actual number. So I need to add um, five zeros to it, really, or five place marks. If we look at B, my scientific notation would be 7.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would be a negative 6 because right now my 7.2 is much bigger than 0 0.0000072. So that means I would use a negative for my exponent to move um, the decimal place. Okay, so think about that as you're writing your answers. Now if we do it in reverse, we have 6.93 times 10 to the seventh. So how do we turn that into an actual numbers? Well, 6.93 right now is a pretty small number. It's just 6.93, and I need to get bigger. So that means I'm going to move my decimal seven places to the right. So 1, 2, 3 out of 0, 4 out of 0, 5 out of 0, 6 out of 0, 7 out of 0. So that gives me 6930000. Add in your commas. So 69,300,000. For part B, we have 4.7 times 10 to the negative 6. So that means we got to get smaller by six decimal places. So 1, 2 out of 0, 3 out of 0, 4 out of 0, 5 out of 0, 6 out of 0 decimal. So I get 0 0.123450047. zeros four seven. Okay, so hopefully we have this standard notation down. So now this is the type of problem that we're really going to be getting into into this um, section is you're going to have all these complicated numbers in here that you're going to multiply and then divide by. Yes, could you just type this into your calculator and get an answer? Yep, probably you could. Um, but you're going to be required to have to show your work converting everything to scientific notation and then simplifying it that way. So let's take all four of those numbers that you see and convert them to scientific notation. So for our first one, 1,920,000 written in scientific notation would be 1.92 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 power. Okay, now let's go here to 0 0.0015. So that would be... I'm going to bring another times down here. So times 1.5 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, negative 3, because it needs to get smaller, all over, now let's do this number right here, that would be 3.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so negative fifth, because we need it to be smaller times, and then our last one right here, 45,000, would be 4.5 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now this is where it gets nice, because now what we can do is I can multiply like things, just like we did in our 
properties, right? I can do a 1.92 times a 1. Point, oh my goodness, 1.5, right? And then I can do that times 10 to the 6 times 10 to the negative 3, like bases. What do we do with those exponents? Add them together. And then I can do the same thing in my denominator. I can do the 3.2 times a 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5, so I'm just grouping the like things together, times 10 to the 4th. All right, so now let's actually multiply. So 1.92 times 1.5 is 2.88. So there we have to actually use a calculator for it. I'm not expecting you to do that on your own. Times 6 minus 3 is 3, so 10 to the 3rd. In my denominator, 3.2 times 4.5 is 14.4 times 10 to the negative 1. Okay, so now let's simplify further. So now what I'm going to do on my calculator is I'm going to do a 2.88 divided by a 14.4, and I get 0 0.2, so 0 0.2. And then I'm going to do my property of like bases, the quotient rule, right? So 3 minus a negative 1, or if you think about it, if you move that negative 1 up, it would become 10 to the positive 1. So I would have times 10 to the 4th. Okay, now we have to ask ourselves, is that written in scientific notation? No, it is not written in scientific not notation, right? So how do we do the conversion of that? So now let's think about this. I need to move my decimal place to be behind the two. So right now, at, at this step right here, I need my number to be four extra decimal places. But now I just moved one of my decimal places. Didn't I just get one decimal place bigger from 0.2 to 2? Didn't I just get bigger by one decimal place? So now I have to think about this. Is my exponent of 4 going to go to a 5 or is it going to go to a 3? Hopefully you said 3 because I took away one of those decimal places that we originally needed. If you don't see it there, go 0.2, four decimal places, one, two, three, four. So how many zeros do I need? So that really becomes 2,000. So 0.2 times 10 to the fourth is the 2,000 number. How do you write that in scientific notation? Well, that would be two times 10 to the one, two, three. Okay, I know, it's a bit complicated. So let's quickly think about, I know this is not in your notes, but if you had something like, um, if we had 0.14 times 10 to the fifth, well then that would convert to 1.4 times 10 to the fourth, right? Okay, or if it was 0.257 times 10 to the third, then it would be 2.57 times 10 to the second, because you're taking away one of those. Now it's a little bit different when we have negative exponents, right? So if I had 0 0.2 times 10 to the negative four, and I had to go to scientific notation, now think about that. That means I'm moving to the left. So one, two, three, four decimal places. So now how do I convert this number into proper scientific notation? That would be 2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, negative fifth power, right? So we're still subtracting 1 each time, right? Because what's negative 4 minus 1? Negative 5. So then what would be the conversion for 0 0.14 times 10 to the negative 6? Well, that would be 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7. So we're subtracting one decimal place, right? Or 0 0.275 times 10 to the negative third would be 2.75 times 10 to the negative 4. We're still subtracting one decimal place. 
Okay, hopefully you think you got that. Here is your last try it on your own. Did you get 2.875 times 10 to the negative 2? Hopefully you did. Okay, that concludes our notes, guys. Please move on to your next assignment. See you tomorrow. Bye.